Welcome to the Successful Life Podcast. I'm your host, Corey Barrier, and I am here with my man, Ishmael Valdez. What's up, Ish? What up, what up, what up, what up? Good to see you, brother. What's up, man? Thank you for having me today, Corey. Yeah, dude, I'm really looking forward to this conversation. It's interesting. When we booked this podcast, actually, uh, wasn't even for the reason that you would think. I didn't really even know that I was going to be talking to you about a whole different well, and we can get into that later. Ish, for the people that don't know who you are, could you uh, just give everybody a little bit of a rundown of who you are and some of the things that you've done? Damn, I don't want to stroke my ego today. I'm a hustler, man. I'm a hustler. I'm, I'm 34 years old. I was born in uh, I was born in Mexico City, raised here in California. I've lived my whole life here since I was five years old. I got in the trades when, right out of high school. I was uh, I was in a dilemma whether I wanted to go to college. Or I wanted to go into start working so I could make some money. Unfortunately, my dad had uh, some back issues and I had to start grinding, which is really hard because at in high school I had such fucking dope ass grades and I was like, I was pretty much top of my class in everywhere and I, I didn't really want to go to college. I didn't know what I wanted to do and I couldn't afford college at the time. And, uh, and just people kept offering me like, hey. You could come to Cal State Fullerton. They, some of the f- people that are coming in, they were like offering f- to pay for my full tuition and shit like that. And uh, and it was really hard to, for me to say no to that and go and, and start grinding. So I got into the trades. I think I was 17, 18 years old when I got into it and uh, I never left, man. I've done, uh, I've done from warehouse work to I worked at a supply house for about nine years for this uh, company called Howard Industry. That's where I started my career and I build the relationships with the, with installers, technicians, and, and sales guys here in Southern California. Uh, I started three companies. Uh, my second company was one of the biggest one, and obviously NextGen was the biggest one. <clears throat> Last company I was with, I was with, it was called Home Comfort USA. We grew that company from, I think we went from zero to 21 million in like four years. Had 145, 50 employees. We grew pretty quick. We didn't know any uh, that there wasn't anything special about it. We just thought it was a hustle and we needed to make money. So we grew it, right? Got into a discrepancy in 2016, 17 with the, with, uh, the partner that I had in there. And uh, yeah, he fired me, man. He fired me for, for the, his reason was he was paying me too much money. And, uh, and he needed to cut some overhead. And now knowing what I know, he was just drying out of cash flow, right? So, uh, yeah, we got into a, a, an argument. We parted ways in 2006, late 2016, early 2017. And then uh, a couple of weeks later, I will start next year. And here we are seven years later. We're like, I think we're like number one or number two in California. We are on pace to be number one in, in, in the United States in the next three, three to four years max. We're going to be the largest air conditioning and plumbing contractor in the United States here in the, which is pretty freaking dope because the company that has that title right now is Parker and Sons. And it's our partner at Wrench Group now, and they're two hundred million dollar monster. I know it took them 30, 40 years. I'm not talking shit, PK. I love you, but we would have done it like in nine years, eight years. So it would have been fucking dope to beat them. But anyways, yeah, man. Fast forward uh, today, I'm still here at Next Gen Air Conditioning. I sold it to private equity last year, around 10, <clears throat> 10 11 months ago. I sold it to them, and I thought I was gonna work once a week, work once a month, and it turns out that these guys buy you and they make you work more. Here's a fat check. Go ahead and enjoy life. And then they put all these competitions for us and we're talking shit. Who's going to be number one. And now we got like a brotherhood at ranch. It's, it's dope, man. Dude, I love it. <clears throat> I was just listening to, wow, I'm going to draw a blank on his name. The CEO. He was just on Ken Tommy's Haynes. show. Ken Haynes. Ken Haynes, yep. Yeah. So I was just listening to him right before this, and I, dude, I love what that guy. I really like what he was talking about, and I have a feeling that he is probably going to be next on my list to call. He's the reason why so, I joined Ranch. He's the reason why I joined Ranch. There was, I think, when we went to market, Next Gen was like probably the most sought after company in the United States when we went to to put it for sale. And don't quote me on this. I think Brian Cohen was the one that told me 
when we went to market, there was like 160 NDAs that were signed overnight that people were wanting to see our financials, our marketing deck, all of that. And uh, and before we actually went to market, I met up with Ken Haynes, the uh, CEO of the Ranch Group, and he's like the main reason why I joined them because off the bat we clicked. We started talking about baseball, my pops, and like we just, I knew I could work alongside with them. And I know it's been like nine or 10 months now, and it's fucking dope, bro. Like that dude is probably one of the dopest dudes in the industry. So think about this, right? I want you to just for a second, I, and, I, and you probably have drawn this conclusion, or you've probably drawn this parallel, but mm-hmm. the same way that you got into the trades was very similar to how Ken got you into the wrench group by you being and servicing, working at the, at the, uh, why am I drawing a freaking blank here at the house. heart store? Yes. Fly house. It's the same thing, right? That's why people gave you a chance because of the yeah. same reason what Ken did for you. And I love that. Cause it's, it's when I think about selling, I don't think about selling like you would, like, like a lot of people think about it. It's, you add value to the person, you deliver more than what you're getting paid for, and you do it with good intention. And so that's what he did with you, right? Yeah. Yes, he did. Yes, it's he dope. Did. Just... Go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah, he did. He did. I'm telling you, he came in here and he, whether he saw something in me or what it was the connection that me and him had, it was um, pretty, pretty fucking incredible. Dude, I was minding my own fucking business, running a hustle. You know what I'm saying? Then I started hearing all these people selling and private equities coming in. And I had to fucking, I had to restructure the whole company and make it legit. So it's actually been a sellable company. But yeah, man, he came in and literally like everything he told me, everything we, we planned and up to now, it's, it's been fucking perfect. So let me ask you, you said that you, you had to get everything straightened out. And I know a little bit of the backstory. There's some tax stuff and all that mm-hmm. stuff. We don't have to get into all that. that most people Hell yeah, we can. Let's get into that shit. Yeah. Well, so the, what I want you to talk about is let's draw this at the end with, I want you to draw the parallel between what you did and what a lot of people are doing right now and what the benefits of not doing it the way you did it. That's kind of, that's where I want you to go with that, if you will. So, so look, and I've told this before to people, you guys got to, like, people are always asking me, hey, Ishmael, should I sell my company? I got people emailing me and calling my shop that they want to buy my company. I'm like, those are marketed people. They're not, like, looking at your company because, like, they know something. They're just fucking <laughs> cold calling, finding out who they were. Like, when they started with Nexion, once people found out what the value and how much revenue and trucks and the actual footprint of next gen that's when the interest came in so most people ask me and I'm, I'm, i tell them like how much revenue are you doing oh three to four million dollars five million i'm like bro there's nothing there you are the company if you want some if you want to sell something i'm not trying to like be a dick or or be demeaning to people but like at three to five million dollars you are the company if you leave like something could happen and the company goes down, and that's something that private equity is not going to fucking take a liability on. <clears throat> so when I tell them, look, man, three to five million dollars, that's a dope. Congratulations. That's an accomplishment most people won't do. Focus on getting between 20 to 25 million dollars in revenue. Structure your accounting department. And your accounting department is 90% of the fucking battle when dealing with private equity. Okay. The other 10% is, yeah, the marketing, the operation, the vans, how you flow, everything. Yeah, they care about all that. The number one thing that private equity wants to see is that if they came in right now and they injected $10 million of capital, $50 million of capital, $5 million, whatever that looks like, if they injected capital, what would that do to your growth? Did you build a system that, that if private equity gave you an unlimited budget of marketing, an unlimited budget of buying vans and recruiting people? If they gave you that, is there a system that they can work with where they can go from 25 to 50 to 100 to 200 million? If the answer is yes, if the answer is yes, then you have something super valuable. Okay. I sold next gen when it was $60 million, $60 million in revenue. And we were fucking growing out of control. Our growth rate, and these are 100% like facts. Okay. Our growth rate from 22, 21 to 22. It was almost a hundred percent growth rate. In 2022, we went 
we did 87% growth. Okay, 87% growth at our size. Now, at $5 million, $10 million, 100%, 200%, 300% growth, that's dope. Anybody could do that. But once you get to 50, 60, 75, 100 million, and you're maintaining that type of growth, it's a fucking Lamborghini that you built. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. so when private equity saw that, they knew that I built a system. So the best advice I could give people is, look, if you're anywhere between one to $10 million, focus, put your fucking head down, build your accounting team, get a controller, get a CFO, get a, yeah, like build all your backend structure. So when you get to 25, 10, 20, I mean, 20, 25 million dollars, you have a system already where private equity could come in and write you a check enough so you could be like, okay, cool. Now I can secure my family. You know what I'm saying? So that's probably the best advice I could give people. Like, oh, you guys got to focus, man. You guys got to put in the fucking work. I know next year is like an anomaly. We grew it to... $100 million in seven years. Our plumbing department went from zero to $30 million in three years. What takes 30 years, 25 years, we were doing it in two to three year terms now. Okay. So like, I know that's in a, like, I know people look at it and they're like, well, I want the next gen story. Yeah, dude, you know how much fucking work I had to put in? My whole life revolves around this shit. It's not like I just wake up and I go, oh, hopefully they figure it out today. And hopefully we hit our goal. No. Every fucking day I wake up, every fucking day I open my eyes, I pray to the Lord and I say, thank you for another day. And then I get to grinding, man. We have a goal every day and we hit it. So my advice is put your fucking head down, grind, put the work in, learn, right? Make the decision, structure your team, do all that. And then put you, and then take a break and be like, okay, cool. Now I have something to sell. At three to $5 million, you have nothing. Put your head down and grind. Yeah, dude, because here's the thing. If you had a business that was ready to be sold with all those processes, you would never be asking you that question, yeah. right? You, because you have the experience. And again, it's not knocking anybody, but the facts are you do have to put in the work. And the other thing that you do need to do is put yourself around people that are doing better than you because you can learn stuff from them. And I'll tell you, the my experience with Anybody, just about my experience with people in the trades, they're willing to tell you what they're doing. Yep. Right? Yep. 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 Dude, I didn't you know. Gotta I, ask. You, you said something really, really cool. Like people that know that people that have something like a, a sellable company, I have a really good company. They don't know it. Like I didn't know NextGen was going to be like for sale and it was going to get this much fucking money because I was so focused on grinding. I was so focused on, Hey, like Ken Goodridge would come in, Ken Haynes would come in, Leland, everybody would come into next year and they would look at it and they would say, well, you need to work on this. And fucking, as soon as that sentence ended, we were already working on it. I'll give you a perfect example. Ken Goodrich came in in 2019 and my company wasn't doing that good. It was, uh, it was doing okay. It was, uh, I needed a little bit of structure and he looks at me and he goes, Dude, you are, you're still the company. Like you're running the whole company. You're taking phone calls from technician, installer, sales guy. He's like, you need to build a management system that makes decisions for you. Dude, as soon yes. as he left that day, as soon as he left that day, I looked at myself and I'm like, he's fucking right. He's not answering phone calls to, for installers and technicians and sales guys and role playing it, doing all that shit. He's walking around seeing exactly what's, what the system needs, Right. He's walking around exactly with the system and he implements it. So as soon as he left, I'm like, fuck, I got to start building a management system. So we built it. You know what I'm saying? hundred percent, dude. A hundred percent. And it's one of the hardest things I think as a business owner that we have to do is delegate responsibilities, especially if it's your baby, right? This is your baby. It's your baby. It's really hard to say, I'm going to let somebody handle these really important things because you're afraid that, what could go sideways, right? We've heard of the stories, but the fact is you got to vet people the right way. You've got to find out what they're like. You got to do your damn homework. Yeah. It goes back to putting your head down and grinding, man. Honestly, like if, 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 I want this podcast to be around the fucking work that it takes and not just the prizes that everybody sees all the fucking exotic cars that I have now and all the fucking shit that I got going on. Like they see that they didn't see the seven years of 
Nobody knew who the fuck I was. I was just fucking grinding. I didn't do no podcast. I wasn't on Facebook. I wasn't telling anybody what I was doing. I was with my head down, focused on what the business needed. And I was fucking calling everybody in the industry. If I found out that there was a $50 million company in Boston, Massachusetts, whatever the name was, I would find out, I'd pick up the phone, I would call them and I would tell them, hey, my name's Ishmael. I own a small company in Southern California and I want to learn what... I heard you guys are doing 50 million. Can I fly over there and spend some? Dude, I would do that shit every fucking day, nonstop. You know what I'm saying? So I want this podcast to be about the grind, though, about putting in the fucking work, right? And then taking the, being able to enjoy. Don't lose the patience, man. 100%. So where could, so if, let's just say somebody, they're a couple of years in the business, four, five, 10 million, whatever. And maybe they don't, they are grinding, right? They don't have time, right? We hear this a lot. They don't have time because they put, they ultimately put themselves in a position not to have time. And look, we've all been through it. I'm not knocking that person, but how could somebody that's super busy, they really, they're really tied, right? They're tied to the business. They really can't leave. Yep. How would you suggest or where would you suggest them go to connect with some of these people? What would be the easiest way? Look, the easiest way is social media, guys. I know you guys are like, I've had people DM me. Dude, I probably have, no bullshit, 30 to 50,000 DMs on my fucking Facebook of people like always asking me questions. And you know what? I fucking answer every single one of those DMs, okay? So the easiest way to do it, man, is go on social media. There's pretty dope-ass groups out there that people have. Like Service Titan has a dope-ass group. We, I have a, my Service Avengers group that I mentor people on. There's some pretty dope ass groups out there that if you want quick answers of, Hey, I'm at $3 million. I'm still running sales calls. What should I do next? That kind of shit. Social media is going to be your quickest way to do it. And then the cool part about it is because you're posting and people are commenting and now you're DMing each other. Now it becomes a relationship where it's like, Hey man, do you mind if I go to your shop? Hey man, do you mind if you hop on a zoom call with me? Hey man, do you hop, uh, mind if you hop on the phone with me? Like the quickest way and the coolest way to do it. Go on social media, look for the people that have the results, okay? Listen to what the fuck I'm going to say because this shit pisses me off. Look for the people that have the results and then learn from them. There's a fucking ton of these fucking young punks now going up on social media and pounding their chest. And you and you talk to them and they're like a $4 million company that's been around for five years, 10 years. And there's nothing wrong with that. But you're only going to get limited knowledge at that point. If you want to be a $50 million company, look for all the $50 million companies. If you want to be a $20 million company, look for all the $20 million companies and start talking to those guys because they got there somehow. And you're going to take one thing from everybody. And by the time you know it, you built it yourself. I've always known. I've always known I wanted to be a $100 million company. Now I want to be a $500 million company, which I am going to be in the next three to four years. But I've always known $100 million was my goal since day one. Because Leland didn't accomplish it, can like none of the big names in the industry had accomplished a hundred million dollars yet. Then this is five six years ago when, when I set this goal. So I've always known that, but I but and I and I chase those people. I would talk to Leland, to Kevin Comerford, to Ken Goodrich, to Kenny Haynes, Geiger, all those guys. I would be on the phone with them, asking them questions. Dude, they would get fucking annoyed with me of like how much shit I was asking them. Right. But I didn't give a fuck. I wanted to learn. I wanted to learn. So I literally every hundred million dollar company, I went out there and I freaking and I asked questions about it. And I asked questions, accounting questions, staffing questions, marketing questions. Every question that you guys asked me, I had the same question at 20 million, 30 million, 40 million, 100 million. It's the exact same thing. It's just a different way to approach it. That's all it is. Totally agree. One thing I'll say about your group on Facebook, the Avengers, the Avengers group, is that when if somebody's listening to this and maybe they're not on Facebook or maybe they are on Facebook and they don't have a picture because they don't really want to know. Here's one thing that I do know. I don't know that I've ever seen anybody say, I, mean, may, I shouldn't say maybe never seen anybody say anything negative, but I don't really recall there ever being like asking a genuine question and somebody shitting on them. Right? I don't nope. think I've ever seen that. And if it happens, I kick them out of the group. Fuck them. Okay? I don't do that shit. 
and I don't know right. anything, right? So if somebody asks a genuine question, dude, there's always people commenting on it, always people commenting and giving you advice on it, or hey, DM me, let's get on a, get on a call. There's always people people wanting to help you that's the dopest that was the only reason why i came up with service avengers service avengers was built because i had so many fucking questions about the industry about what's going to happen about how to operate properly all that right so i built a group for it that was the only reason now it's a pretty dope ass group because people ask about marketing people ask about operations about financing and there's always people commenting on it so it's a dope ass group man and i don't know if you noticed this Corey, but Lately, I've been fucking, there's a bunch of people trying to like promote themselves and, and put product on there. Like we eliminated that. It's a hundred percent contractors now talking about operations, talking about marketing, talking about financing, asking questions about recruitment. I go in there, I'm going to go in there on a Saturday early in the morning and I'm going to do a quick live and, and answer questions. Dude, after those lives that I make. I get hundreds of DMs like, oh, Ishmael, thank you. You answered my question. Oh, next time. Could you talk about this? You know what I'm saying? Wonder, I mean, that would, that's got to be a, that's got to be a lot. I wonder. Actually, I don't wonder, but I bet you there's. I know there's a way that you could set up some sort of an integration that would pipe those DMs into a spot to where you would be able to see them in one. Because that's got to be a damn. You got you to get a headache looking at all that stuff. I have two. I have two assistants. I have three assistants, and one of them works on the social media group all day long. So she'll filter yeah, okay. out all the. Like if people asking for paid plans, people are asking for whatever I offer them and they will DM me and she filters them out and I try not to get involved in it. I look through it sometimes when she marks them because they ask them like a, a really good question and I'll answer it and I'll go. I'll, so there's sometimes that I'm driving and somebody like drops a comment or a put question. I'll DM them a, a, like a voice memo because the text message would be too long. And these people are like so surprised when I answer them. I'm like, dude, like I'm here to help you guys, man. I want you guys to make fucking money. I want everybody to make money. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's a little bit of fear, right? It's, it's really fear of pro probably people think it's weird that I have a normal conversation with you. Like I just, like I, it is just a normal conversation. Like y'all would have the same conversation with this dude that I would have. Like, it's the yeah. Same. yeah. It, dude, I, I'm a normal dude. I don't, you know, I don't, all I do is focus on the grind. I, I don't, there's nothing special about me. There's no, I'm not smarter than anybody. I didn't go to college. I didn't do none of that. So like when people ca call me or DM me, like, don't expect anything from me. I'm just a regular fucking dude that loves to grind. So I tell this to everybody, when you talk to me, like if I was a golden retriever, that's like my <laughs> level of, that's like my level of IQ right there. <laughs> that's hilarious. So, all right, let's shift gears for a minute. Because I bet I well, I wonder. I like I, we've had this we've had a conversation now for a little over a half an hour and seemed perfectly normal. But all you haven't always been probably this happy and joyful, like you, like myself. We both had drinking careers. I want to hear a little bit about yours. Oh man, I, I had a good drinking career. <laughs> I had a really good drinking career. I think I started drinking when I was 14, 15 around there. And I went hard for, what, almost fucking, dude, I went hard for about 15 years, man. 15 years. And I was like the children. You see, the cool, the, well, not the cool part. The thing about my drinking, though, is that it was like a surprise. It was like a surprise every time I drink. Because, like, one day you would get happy Ishmael, and it's, he's like, fucking, let's go party. Let's have a good time. And then the next day, the next time you would get drunk, I would drink, I'd be like, sad and depressed and like what am i doing with my life and then the next time i would be crying and then the next time i would be like so like everybody was scared to drink around me i was aggressive sometimes so everybody would be scared so until my wife sat me down and said hey i need you to stop drinking or i need you to like to get the hell out of our lives because you're not going to have both right and when she set that boundary and we fucking she gave me that option the next day bro it wasn't even and I was hung over, by the way, when she told me this. I was really hung over. <laughs> when she told me, hey, you got to make a choice whether you want to keep your family and be with us or you want to keep drinking because we're not going to put up with it no more. The next day, there was no more drinking. Well, I've been sober for four years and a couple months now. And, uh, and it was the best fucking decision I've ever made in my life. Thanks to me sobering. And it actually goes back to thanks to my wife telling me this. Hey, Ishmael, 
it's either drinking or your family. Thanks to that decision, I was able to sell next gen. I was able to structure the business. I was able to look at the de defects that the operation had. I was able to have clarity in my mind to knowing how to get to $100 million, right? Because I didn't know I had to figure it out on the way over there. But thanks to that one drastic decision that I made in 2019 or 18, whatever it was, thanks to that decision, we're here talking about how dope fucking next gen is. And there's, uh, and there's no way this would have ever happened if you'd still been drinking. Like... I think I would have. I think I would have bankrupted next year if I was uh, if I was still drinking. I really believe that because because I was drinking. In 2019 was my harshest year. I was drinking. I was having my problems with my wife. I was my business was barely making any money. I was in the business was in debt. I was trying. I was scratching and the surfaces just, just to go by every day. In 2019 was the worst but the best day the year of my life because that's when everything shifted right but no there's no way man there's no way i would have sold the company i would have been this healthy i would have had four healthy beautiful girls like there's no way i would have had all that if that one decision wasn't made in 2019. it's tremendous how one decision could have changed the outcome just one decision right and we've all had those decisions that it really could have gone either way Right, it really could have, but we just something God put it on our heart to make. Hundred percent God did it. Right, hundred percent God did it. Yeah, dude, hundred percent. So, that so is, did you? Go ahead. go ahead. So are you all right? So do you? Did you go to? Did you go? I mean, I don't know. Some people get uncomfortable. I, I don't care. I, I tend alcoholics on this. I got a story about that. that whatever. Um, but you know, and I don't think that necessarily that's for everybody. No. But I just know for me, the first six years I was sober, it felt like I'll just tell you. I started another business, my ego took over, and I said, basically, fuck it, I don't need it. And so what happened six years later, I went to, this just happened this past year, or maybe seven years later. Six. Anyhow, so I went and talked to this guy. Here's the reason. I didn't want to say I am an alcoholic, because... If you know anything about I am, whatever comes after that, it's what you can embody, it's what you identify as. And I didn't want to identify as that. And that dumbass thought kept me out for six years, which really held me back because I didn't, I didn't help anybody else, obviously, because I wasn't in the rooms. And so the guy, when I told him this, he said, Corey, he's like, maybe this is just not about you. And I'm like, I went back to AA the next day. And I'm telling you right now, dude, I would never be having a, the conversation with you about Data Cube if that day hadn't happened. Let's call it 90 days ago. Anyway. That's dope, man. Yeah. That's dope, Corey. Wait, Do you know I, something? I think we need to talk right. about that more in the traits, too, about the sobriety on it, because that's been my goal. Like, I don't promote it. I promote it here and there, but I don't promote it as much. Like, I think we... there. I th think there's a lot of people with alcohol and drug problems in the trades, right? And unfortunately, like, like we should do a better job of uh, of identifying that problem and being able to help them out a little bit more. Because, dude, I've saw from my dad to my brothers to there's some people at Next Gen. I think there's nine people now that we sobered up here, not because I'm telling them to be sober, just because they saw me that I'm sober and. Uh, and it's pretty cool. And I think we should, I think we should tag team that, Corey, and uh, see if we could, uh, see if we could uh, that problem a little bit more because it would be pretty dope to help out people sober up and fix their business. Like sobering up is dope, but fixing their business while you're sobering up, that like, I ha I know what that feeling look, I know what that feeling is, and it is fucking dope, man. It is dope seeing the growth of your and the clarity of your mind while your business is fucking going from low single digit profits to high digit double digits mid digit you know what i'm saying and then you look sit back and you you look at everybody around you and you go like god damn like imagine if i didn't stop drinking none of this would have happened so i think i think i'm going to do a better job of promoting that and making sure people know that if they need help they could Obviously, there's plenty of programs out there, but we should do something dope where we promote sobriety a little bit more. I think that's actually a 
I think that's actually a really good idea. And in fact, I I kind of need to do something like that, right? I need to give back to more people. I don't talk about it very much. I don't think I've ever talked about it inside the group because I just don't look at it that way. But maybe it's maybe this is a topic or an idea or some accountability group that we could put together. And maybe it's just for the people in the group for now, but I think if we could give people a place to come and feel safe, yeah. to have these conversations, right? Yep. That's the main thing. Because there's a and I think we can change with problems, alcohol and drug problems in the trades, bro. And I think we should do, I th- if we could grab some people that, that are sober now and, and we've gone through the the fire already of sobering up. I think we should. I think we could impact. I think we could impact the trades a lot more. A lot more than, than dude. I think it would be a dope as idea. Now that I think about it, to, to promote it more. Well, if you think about it, it and you know, the, I, I'll just say it like the guy said it to me. He said, the same guy, "He said, Corey, he said, you know, you you have a lot of influence." He was like, "But you're not using it for the better good." And I really hit between the eyes, right? I'm like, damn, dude. It's true. Yeah, it's true. Sometimes but I need to hear it. it. Sometimes we forget about it, man. Honestly, I forget about it sometimes. I got to luckily I have a lot of good people in my life that bring me down and say, hey, you, you need to go back to this, right? I'll give you a perfect example. That stupid post that I posted about one of my competitors being a fucking idiot online and talking shit about me. And I went and, I, and he dragged me down into it and I posted about it. An hour later, two hours later, my one of my good mentors texts me and says, "Hey man, you're in a different league now. You shouldn't be worried about stupid shit like that. You should go back to what got you here and focus on your business because they're always everybody's gonna come after you when you know you're the biggest. You, 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 what you've done is is something that not a lot of people get to do, and everybody's gonna come after you, right? So, yeah, man. Right after that, that my mentor came in and, and told me I took down that post and I apologized to people and. Uh, and I told him, hey, from now on, I'm going to discipline myself to making sure that if there's noise outside, I'm focused on helping you guys. And that's the point of the group, the Service Avengers group. And that's the point of Nexion and, and why we're here. We want to help more people out. We have, Corey, we have three to five contractors here at Nexion every fucking week, bro. Every week. They come in and it's so cool to see them in the morning come in. They're, they got their notepads and their pens and their phones and I run them through like management, executives, directors, through sales, through production, through our CSR room, through everywhere, the whole operation. And you can see their fucking writing, writing notes. And they're like so ecstatic. So, yeah, man, I, I, if there's anything I could do to help out more, dude, I'm count me in. And, and if it's taking on this project with you, of, of promoting sobriety more with the trades, I'm all in, man. You know what I think we could do if you wanted to? We could. We could just get, we could kind of get an idea of what the interest is like. We could, yeah. we could go live in the group. You and I have a similar conversation and talk about some of the struggles that we've gone through and talk about what it was like you know, that first day of waking up and realizing your hands are shaking and you just feel like you're going to, you're going to die. And that feeling of that empty feeling that things are never going to get better. It's the worst feeling in the world, dude. Worst oh, I get it. It's the worst, but it's also the best too, though. Because depending on how you look at it, it literally snaps you the fuck out of you and go, like, "Oh shit, I need to turn my life around." Or it, you can let it drown you. And I think that that when people are at that point, that's where we need to catch them and tell them, "Hey, bro, you, this is the bottom. Okay, the only way's up now." <laughs> well, you just said something really interesting. You said, "You know, uh, actually." I- I completely. What did you just say? I completely lost it. Sorry. About the, you just about said something. You, you, yeah, no, I know, but you said something. Oh, you said the perspective. That's what it was. So you said it's good to see that the perspective, or to think about that perspective that I gave, and then think about the perspective of where we are now. That kind of yeah. solidifies, I think, what we're not doing. <laughs> we're just telling people what the possibilities are. Of course. So we need to. We need to figure out a process, Corey, where we can show people, hey, yeah, like this is where we are now. But like when we were there, this is what we did to, to get out of that funk, to get at, to be able to say, hey, I'm sober now or I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to turn into be being sober. So I think that's where we need to analyze this. But 
Dude, it's a dope ass podcast, man. Thank you for uh, thank you for having me on this shit, man. Dude, hundred percent. I'll do this. I'll put something together. I'll put something together, a vision of maybe how we could do this, and I'll run it by you, and we'll, we'll do something. But I think it's important. All right, dude. So look, I know we're getting towards the end. I know you're rock and roll. I just want to say, uh, first off. It was a dope ass conversation, and we're gonna have several more dope conversations. I guarantee you, after we have get all this other stuff worked out. But look, if you could tell everybody where they could find you, and if there's anything else you'd like to share before we go, by all means, do that, dude. So my message to the trades is always: I, I, in the last couple of years that I've been sober, I've been pushing that a little bit more. But my message to the trade has always been the same, man. Like I was 18, I was 17, 16 years old, actually, when my dad kicked me out. I was going through high school. I didn't know what I was going to do between high school and my dad kicking me out and I needed to feed myself. So I go back to that 17-year-old me, 16-year-old me that I was getting out of high school and didn't know what the fuck I was going to do. That's that My life is still stuck there. Like I, in my mind, that, that 16, 17-year-old kid, I look at him and I go, like, man, this is where you need to go. Like the trades literally saved my fucking life. They, they gave me, they opened the floodgates to everything that I have now. You know what I'm saying? I have a dope ass family. I have a beautiful wife, four kids. We have houses everywhere. We have fucking cars that are stupid expensive. We, we have all that. We have good health, right? And it was all because of the trades. And my message to, to, to everybody is going to that 16, 17 year old kid, every kid, right? And that's getting out of high school. And instead of just pushing them to college, my message is always like, hey, let's give them an option of informing them of what the traits can do too, and let them decide, right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep pushing that message of sobriety, number one, and number two, of making sure that every high school, man or woman, gay, straight, black, white, whatever it is, 16, 17, 18 year olds getting out of high school that don't know what they're gonna do with their life. I want them to know that there's an option and that we're willing to mentor them, grow them, bring them onto the trades. And that's the dopest part about it. I got, dude, I have a 21 year old or 20 year old that just started with me. This is last year was his first year. He made $136,000, 20 years old, out of fucking college. He was going to go to college. He made $136,000 his first year. I, I got a plumbers here that are like 21, 22, 23, 24 years old, making two, 300,000 a year, bro, with no debt. They're just regular plumbers. They, you know, they're handy with their hands. They're, they know how to talk to people and communicate. So that's what we should be messaging people. That's what we need to sit down and talk to all these kids. So there's one thing I could leave you guys with. Like, we should all unite all the trades, the, the plumbers, electrical, roofing, solar, all the guys, and have that message. Because the only way, listen to it. Okay, the only way we're going to fix the trades have one problem. The biggest problem that the trades have is the lack of labor. We don't have enough people that want to be plumbers, want to be air conditioning guys, want to be roofers. Nobody wants to do that. They stumbled into it. And we've been doing pretty well with what we have. Okay? Listen to me. What we have, we've been doing pretty well. Now imagine if we had an abundance of labor. Everybody wanted to be plumbers because they found out that they're making two, 300000 Everybody wants to be technicians or installers or sales reps, or whatever it is inside the operation, in the trades. Imagine what we can do with the trades. It would be a whole different ballgame. It would be a whole different ballgame, and that's what we need to focus on. You guys could find me on Service Avengers on Facebook. That's 99% of the time I'm there helping mentor people. If there's any other question, you guys could always DM me there. And you know, I, try to, I try to hop on at least once a day to, to post on it, and then if there's a really intriguing question, I'll go in there and I'll answer it on, on the live. So. I'm glad you invited me, Corey. Hey, so I got some great news for you. Whenever we get this thing worked out, I have the solution to that trade to the, to that labor problem. Dude, we need to all unite to fucking. It's gonna be dope. Let's just say that. Yeah. Let's just say. That. All right, brother. I appreciate you, my man. No problem. Thank you, Corey.